Now I'm going to sit down with Jeff E, the VP of Product Marketing and Strategy for ZTE. With the announcement of the Blade V9 and the V9 Plus, I want to find out how ZTE is staying ahead of the curve. Hi Jeff. Hello, thanks. I see that you brought some goodies for us. I did, yes. Tell us about the new product launches. So I brought along with me the Blade V9. This is our latest in the mid-range segment for ZTE. And the Blade V9 is known for a great camera, especially in low light. Oh. That'd be evening photos, bars, restaurants. And we also went with a new 18 by 9 aspect ratio. So you have uh, more viewable space for social media, less scrolling, yes. web browsers, and also a stock Android UI. Very clean. And really thin, too. And very thin. I'm going to just test it out. Yeah. It's a, great, it's a great design. We won an IF Design Award for that phone. Oh, that's nice. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and what about this one? So this uh, is the Axon M, which we uh, launched in the United States, in Japan, in China. It's just rolling out now here to Europe. Uh, the unique thing about this phone is that it unfolds to be the size of a tablet. Now, there's three different modes, new modes that we have added. The first is it extends it to be basically the size of a tablet, so one application that goes across both screens. Uh -huh. But if I wanted to do two applications, so if I want to do maybe YouTube on the top, and while I'm watching YouTube, I will oh, move up this up with three fingers moves an application. And now if I want to do Twitter while I'm watching a video, the last mode that we have is a mode called mirror mode. And with mirror mode, the same thing is shown on the same side. So you and I could be watching a video, or this is even more fun, you and I could be playing a game. It's like Battleship from back we, in the we day. We could be playing Battleship. In this case, chess. Sorry, I've tilted that this the wrong way, so, so let's make sure the, cool. the viewers can see that. Right? Is this a newer model, or is this the same Axon M that you guys have rolled out with before? Well, this, is, this right here is the same Axon M that we launched uh, late last year. Got it. Uh, but since you brought that up, we are absolutely working on a new Axon M. And one of the things that we're working on is to make sure that it has a truly bendable display in the future. I can't guarantee that it'll have it for the next version, but it is something that is in development and we will continue. And it's the reason why we call these the foldable phone, not a dual screen phone. That is really interesting. Can you unfold it for me again? I want to see. So some of the earlier feedback we've gotten from this phone is that the hinge in the middle kind of disrupts the viewing experience. But what you're showing me is the multitasking function Absolutely. of dual screen, yeah. I, which I find more profound than just one full screen. Yeah. You're able to do a lot more with two screens. So if you, if you think about it, the, um, the use cases we're going after is the same thing people are doing in the home and the office. So in the home, people are watching TV, and they're also on their computer or maybe their phone, and they're tweeting or they're doing emails. Mm -hmm. It's multitasking. The, the phone can do the same thing. One screen for watching video, another screen for typing or tweeting or doing something. And there's an endless number of combinations of, of apps that you can do. Really, any application can run on one screen and another application on another. And this is not available in the US right now. It is. It, it is available. It's, it's exclusive the through AT&T right now. What's the price point on this phone? Through AT&T, it's 725 No, uh, That's a no contract price. Or it's 24 27 I think, per month. I kind of enjoy that because of the dual screen, it doesn't even, it doesn't really add any weight or width to the phone itself, which yeah. is nice. Yeah, that's something I really want to see in person. Yeah. Now, last year, we talked about the Gigabyte phone, and right. this year, all the rage is about 5G. Correct. When can we expect to see a ZTE uh, 5G phone? Well, I think we've already publicly stated probably within a year from now. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So our viewers, I, I just want to clarify for them, 5G phone needs to work on 5G infrastructure. Correct. When can we see 5G infrastructure happen? Well, every country is going to be different. There's a different answer for every country and every carrier in every country. Um, at, at this show, there's probably a lot of carriers that are actually right now making their announcements. In the U.S., AT&T has made an announcement that they will deploy before the end of this year end of this year. Mm -hmm. So expect a lot faster phones by yes. the end of this year. Yes. That's exciting. Let's talk about some of the mobile trends that we're seeing this year at Mobile World Congress. You know, we've talked about dual cameras. We've talked about bezel-free design. Any yeah. other trends or buzzwords that we should be paying attention to? AI is always a buzzword, right? <laughs> yeah. We see a lot with, uh, with assistance, but um, AR, I'll come back to AR. AR has been a buzzword for, for some time. 
But this is the year of AR. You saw it with the iPhone 10, and now with, with Google's announcement of AR Core, really phones with like this one, mm -hmm. uh, the Blade V9, which is a mid-range, will be able to do AR with, with a two lens. We can get pretty accurate depth information. That's what you need for augmented reality. What that means for developers is there's a lot of phones that are going to hit the market very soon that are going to be AR capable. Yes. And what, when that happens, when developers see more phones, there will be more apps. How is that shaping the world of smartphones? Do you think this is, you know, smartphones are obviously evolving, but what does that mean for ZTE? Yeah, it means some of the things that are, are done on the phone actually move to the network now. A, a classic example is Alexa, right? The, the same, I'll pick on the weather widget, right? On, on here, I've got a weather widget, and it'll tell me what the weather is. And if you think about what's happening, the phone is connecting to the network to find out what's the weather in Barcelona today. Now, when you communicate through an assistant, it's going to the cloud, where the cloud will be checking what the weather is. From a developer perspective now, that's very different, right? You're not writing an application for this. You're writing an application for the cloud. So this, you know, I'll come back to your statement on 5G. As we get to more IoT, as we get to more uh, to lower latency, we're going to see a lot of that computing start to move to the, to the cloud, or, or the edge, as it's called. Right. Fascinating. And what, what does it mean? Because, you know, take the lead is a play on word for take the lead. Mm. So what does it mean to take the lead for ZTE? Yeah, it's, uh, it's innovation. But first off, it's listening to the consumer and what the consumer wants. And, and the Axon M, again, is a good example of that. So we innovated by going to a foldable screen, but why? Well, you know, it's, we can put two screens together, but there has to be a purpose, right? Right. And, and the reason was we sat down with consumers, and, and everyone says they want a bigger screen. We had all the, uh, the facts to back that up, because over time, you've seen how phones have gotten bigger and bigger, right? Three and Absolutely. a half inch, four inch, five. But it stopped at six, right? We tried selling phones that were more than six inches, and people weren't buying them. But they didn't, they didn't say it was because they didn't want a bigger screen. Everyone still wants a bigger screen. It's what fits in the pocket, what fits exactly, in the hand. Exactly, yeah. So we, that's when we knew we had to come up with something innovative. We had to take the lead, you know, to, to use your phrase, uh -huh. and, and do something different in the industry. And what we ended up with is, um, is, is a mix of, of software plus hardware. You saw the hardware. Yeah. But there's a lot that went into the software to understand what a user is doing and to toggle through those modes. The current implementation is two screens, and the future it'll be flexible displays. Last year, everyone, you know, sort of talked about the smartphones making not your life just easier, but enhancing your life. You know, sort of like they wanted filters built into the phones to enhance their, you know, to beautify their image. They wanted um, apps built into the phone to make their images pop. What are some of that? software that we can see in ZTE. Sure, devices. so the uh, uh, Blade V9 has you know, face beautification, uh, with stickers, you know, people want to really add to their own selfies, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of key new features. Uh, AR is really augmented reality it's on both sides now, not just the back, but also on the front. Uh -huh. uh, we've added monochrome features so you can filter certain colors, uh, slowing down videos. There's a number of just fun features for users now on the camera. Don't you think it's fascinating that we have sort of reality, but then we have a reality through our phones now? Mm -hmm. It's a different world, it right? It is, yeah, and you can augment it with all sorts of things. It's a lot of fun. Which phone do you use? I use the Axon 7. Do you? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, let me show that. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry, I've got the audio thing here. <laughs> i got to work. Okay, here we go. Didn't want to drop the audio. Uh, the dual speakers. This phone was terrific for audio. I love listening to music. It's one of the reasons why I carry this phone. It's a great phone, and it's very thin. It is. Axon 7. Well, you heard it here first from Jeff from ZTE. Thank you so much. Now, uh, for anybody at home who wants to know what you guys are up to next, what are some of the future plans that you can tell us about? Yeah, but the only thing I can say is flexible, right? Now, I'll use that word broadly because, one, we're flexible in, in listening to consumers and always changing and pivoting based on, on consumer desires. Second way, reason I'm using that word is for this because there is a direction that we are heading where we will see truly bendable, flexible screens in the future. Oh, and maybe like a roll-up phone. Maybe. That's on my wish list. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Chef. Thank you.